Yeah, engineer. electronic engineer. Okay. But I'm, I consider myself a scientist. I certainly have published papers at this point. Uh, I uh, am generally considered an expert in this field. Um, so. And you've and also had... I've, well, I had a brain tumor, um, which is how I got started in this area. Uh, I went to a lunch with a colleague on April 28, 1995, not knowing I had a health problem at all. And uh, I had a 45-minute grand mal seizure during lunch. An ambulance takes me to the hospital. I'm told I have a massive brain tumor. I was, in fact, very close to dying. I was eight days in critical condition. I'm 11 in the hospital. And when I asked my neurosurgeon why did I get this thing, he said, perhaps electromagnetic fields. I had never heard this before, and I certainly consider myself among the more uh, informed people in the, in, the, in the world. So I went immediately to the science. This is 1995 now. And so there were no cell phone studies out, but what I found was electrical utilities, Electric Power Research Institute in particular, statistically significant risks for brain tumors from electricity fields and for leukemia. Being a little naive at the time, I said, well, if this is in the science uh, papers, why doesn't the public know? Uh, now, I now know that, that uh, as I tell fellow scientists, that science is necessary but not sufficient. Until you can put it into the public domain, um, it doesn't really matter. Um, it matters only to the within this small club that we call scientists. But but the public has to know what the science says, and that's what's been suppressed so far. And would you please repeat the the string of um, consistencies that Why you okay. think there's scientific evidence? Okay, so if you if you look at the Hardell studies, are totally internally consistent, which is one of the things you expect in epidemiology. That is, the longer you use it, the more cumulative hours, the higher your risk. The longer the time since your first use, the higher the risk. The higher the power, and rural uh, cell phones uh, admit more power, the higher the risk. The younger you are, the higher the risk. This is all consistent with what you would expect. Now, the Interphone study is a highly flawed study, but even there, uh, though they show statistically significant protection for less than 10 years of use, which, by the way, they never say that. They only Segal did today, but but they say we found no risk. So that's just spin time squared. Uh, but they always find, always in the Interphone study. This is an industry-funded study. Statistically significant risk for more than 10 years of use on the same side of where you held the cell phone on the same side of the head was where the brain tumor with one exception and statistically significant means 95 percent confidence the one exception was near significance something like 93 94 percent confidence it's consistent so add to that add to that that, that that we know from animal studies we get we get double strand breaks of dna from cell phone use for looking at, at cellular studies, lots of genotoxic, which means, you know, gene damage in cells. The, it's overwhelming data. The only thing that doesn't exist in what would be the classic reason uh, for saying that, there's, that a risk is confirmed is replication of studies. But industry has made sure that there's no replication of studies. We have enough evidence right now. If you looked at the total number of flaws that, that are being suggested, and they are certainly flaws that exist in all the studies, and, tr and say, what's the worst they could be? I cannot imagine that you would reach a place where you wouldn't still have risk. There is, cell phones are causing brain tumors, end of story. And that's the science. And do you see other effects from the, the in the literature or in uh, there's the epidemiological? The, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, other effects in other cancers. There's eye cancer. There's there's testicular cancer. There's uh, uh, lymphoma. There's leukemia. All of these. Now these are single studies. It's hard hard to draw a lot out. But it all says there is a problem. Now there's secondary things for everything from from headaches to electrical hypersensitivity and so on, but I prefer to, to focus on the major problems and you recognize with all cancers. I mean, smoking also causes heart attacks and emphysema. There's lots of problems with any, any carcinogen 
in some ways, the cancers is the, is, the, is the tip of the iceberg, and all these other diseases are underneath the water. But there's, people suffer from them anyway. They, they can die of these other diseases as well. And, and would you speak to the cordless phone? Cordless phones are basically the same as cell phones. Um, and what's really horrible is that I think a great proportion of people keep the base station, which is always radiating 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's the place where you put the handset, and then you can walk away from that and talk. And so that's, that's transmitting um, the, the uh, messages to the handset and is receiving the transmissions from the, um, uh, the handset. Uh, people put them next to the bed because they would like, they, if they get a phone call in the middle of the night, they prefer not to get up. So that means you're in near proximity to the base station, even though you're not using the handset, all night long, eight hours, nine hours, six hours, whatever amount of sleep you get, seven days a week, the worst possible place is in your bedroom, and particularly immediately next to your bed. And how about children? What would your recommendations be? My own belief is that children shouldn't use cell phones. Now, I'm practical enough to recognize that at this time, that couldn't happen, particularly if anybody's had teenagers and you say you can't have a cell phone, which parents have the power to do that, it's almost impossible to deal with that. Certainly children should use uh, cell phones in a precautionary way, which is headsets, keep it away from your body. My own uh, stepson, who's now in medical school, uh, uses a cell phone as ideally as anyone I know. He uses it like an answering machine. It's off, except when he wants to see who's called him, he takes the phone out, he puts headsets on, and he and he replies to those people that have called him. And how about the hollow tube? The hollow tube is is, is somewhat better without a doubt than, than a wired headset, but wired headsets are much more available and they are they help an enormous amount. So what's the bottom line that uh, the average person should know about cell phones? Cell phones cause brain tumors.